Guess what? We're going to use some props today. Hey, I'm Stephen Iwaszki from Adventure Yoga. Thanks for joining me today for this roughly one hour practice. This is an all levels practice and what we're going to do today is open up our hips. At least we're going to work on opening up our hips. That is work that takes time, it takes focus, it takes effort. And we're going to put in all of that today. We're going to do it with the aid of maybe a yoga strap or a belt or a tie. It uh, will just be for a pose as an option. Same thing for a block. It's going to be for the same pose, Gomukhasana, cow face pose, as an option. So if you have those around nearby, you might want them. And the other thing is a yoga blanket I, or uh, some sort of blanket. It might come in handy. You may want to sit on it for some poses. You may want to use it to prop up your legs for other poses. None of it's absolutely essential. Bring what you've got and what you don't have. That's all right. We'll work around it. What, what you might want is a yoga mat. That's where we're going to do a lot of this practice. So if you've got one of those, unroll it, have a seat, and I'll meet you there in just a few seconds. Please come onto your hands and knees, all fours. Also called Barmanasana in Sanskrit. Bring your shoulders over your wrists and your wrists shoulder distance apart. Have your knees roughly underneath your hips and again, knees roughly hip distance apart. It's actually a pretty, your hands and knees are pretty close to each other when you actually do wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. And one of the advantages of that is it helps you really stretch your back when you come into, cow, into cat pose. So let's do that, come into cat pose. Stretch your back, so round your back. Move your hips towards your face, face towards your hips, and really stretch your spine. Push down through your lower legs, your knees, your feet. Push down through your hands. And breathe here, just really open up your back. And then shift into cow pose. Move your chest down, forward, and up. Move your hips back and widen your butt behind you. Lift through your chest here, lift up so you get a stretch across the front of your body. And then breathe into that. Breathe into your front of your chest. Breathe into your front of your ribs. Breathe into your belly. And then back into cat. We won't be here nearly as long. Shift into cow. And back into cat. And back into cow. And then come to neutral. Lift your right knee up off the ground and then take your right knee off to the side. Sometimes I call this dog peeing pose. I don't, I don't really know most of you, I don't think, so I don't know if I can call it dog peeing pose, but I am. So lift your right leg out to the side, but then also shift to have your shoulders still over your wrists. This is gonna really engage your outer right hip, your glute medius, glute max. And then take your right knee back. So now stretch your knee back and have the sole of your foot facing up towards the ceiling. And then uh, imagine that you can and lift your foot up as if you can. Touch your right foot up to the ceiling. So lift your foot up, straighten your leg if that helps. Hold. And bring your right knee down. All right, so dog peeing pose out to the left. Take your left knee out to the side, but shift your shoulders over your wrists. Engage your outer left hip so your left knee lifts higher. And breathe here. And then stretch your left knee back, sole of your left foot facing the ceiling. Again, shift so that your shoulders are over your wrists if you need to shift. And then imagine you can touch your left foot up onto the ceiling and reach it up, up, up. Touch the ceiling and then hold there and bring your left knee down. Again, dog being posed to the right. Lift your right knee up to the side. I won't hold it for as long. 
Start your right knee back. This time, keep your right knee bent and lift your right foot up. It's just a different shape. Hold, and then do a little pulse here, like you're trying to touch your foot up to the ceiling, and down, up, and down, up, and bring your right knee down. Take your left knee out to the side. Stretch your left knee back, and now keep your knee bent, but lift your knee up, and do three little pulses. Two, three, bring your left knee down. Sit back on your heels. Sit up in front of you, interlace your fingers, and push your palms away from you. Move your shoulders down your back, and then stretch your hands up towards that ceiling that we've been reaching our foot for. Now reach your hands for the ceiling, but reach your shoulder blades for your butt. It's a little push me, pull you. So push your shoulders down, pull your hands up. It's all really push you, pull you, because it's all you. Steady your breath. And then lower your hands to your lap. Swing your feet around, stretch your legs out in front of you. Dandasana. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Place your hands beside your hips. Wiggle your butt a little so that you can get the flesh of your butt to not, not be caught. But sit on the ground comfortably. Place your hands beside you. If you can't reach the ground, you can place fists. And just straighten your legs and sit up tall here. Now we're still warming up our back. So sitting here with straight legs and a straight spine might not be possible for you. So see what's happening. Take one hand and reach for your lower back. And if you can feel your vertebrae sticking out, you have a couple of options here. First option is to see if you can make them go in. Move the front of your ribs back. Lift up through your spine. Lift up through your sides. And maybe that'll be enough and your vertebrae will go in. If not, that's okay. You're still awesome. Separate your feet a little. You're still awesome. Your vertebrae are just sticking out. Why? It's because your lower back is rounding and we want it to be in its natural position, which is a slight arch in. So separating your feet will help you move your pelvis a little more. Move the front of your pubic bone forward and down. And then if you still have vertebrae sticking out, just bend your knees a little. Move the front of your ribs back. Lift through your sides. And maybe then you'll be able to find that little arch of your lower back. Place your hands on the ground here and you might be able to help a little more. Push down through your hands. Without moving your heels, pull back with your heels. Move the front of your ribs back and stretch up through your spine. And then relax. Come into plank pose. So flip it all over and come into plank pose. Like we did in all fours, have your wrists underneath your shoulders and your shoulders over your wrists. So it's a similar hand, arm, shoulder placement as all fours. It's the same, not similar. Push down through your hands, push down through your toes, tighten your butt, tighten your belly up and stretch long through your spine. Keep that length in your whole body. Just hinge at your hips so that you come into down dog. So hinge at your hips, and then everything will shift a little with that hinge. Move your hips up so you can come into downward facing dog. So lift your hips up and back. Work for that little arch in your lower back. So move the front of your ribs back. Lengthen up through your hips. And breathe. If you want to straighten one leg and bend the other here, you can. I like that. You don't have to. It gives you a calf stretch for the straight leg. You can focus your mind on that if you're doing that. Focus on stretching your lower leg.
And if you're thinking back to Dandasana, you're pretty sure your lower back is rounding like it was in Dandasana. Do the same thing we did in Dandasana. Separate your feet a little more, bend your knees a little, and see if you can move the front of your ribs back more and lift up through your hips so that you can get that little arch in your lower back. It's not a big arch. It's not like a back bend in your lower back. It's just like a little bit of your lower back moving in. It's to help find the natural curves of your spine. Move your shoulders away from your ears. Move your ears towards your elbows a little. Walk your hands back to your feet. Uttanasana. Touch the ground. If you need to bend your knees so that you can touch the ground, do. But again, if you don't need to bend your knees to touch the ground, then you can do that and stretch your spine along here. Do that. I know, choices. I gotta think about what I'm doing. Yeah, you do. Welcome to yoga. Gotta take part. I know. Walk your hands forward. Come into plank pose this time. Back into plank. Lift your right foot up off the ground until your right heel is roughly as high as your right hip, and pause. And then bring your right toes down. Lift your left toes up, so your left foot, left heel is roughly as high as your left butt. Hold. And then bring your left toes down. And then come down to your knees. Swing your feet over to one side, and sit down. Bring the soles of your feet together and take your knees wide. Baddha Konasana. So hold your toes so that you can help move your feet in towards your hips a little bit. And then stretch out through your inner thighs to really get a nice opening for your inner thighs here. So far in class, I have talked a lot about what's going on in your back. And I've been doing that well, sort of secretly or silently uh, getting you to work on your legs and getting you to work on your hips. Today I really am going to focus on hip opening and talking about like how much time and how much effort and how much patience it really takes to open up, to open up your hips especially. I was planning a pretty exciting class today. I was planning to do a much more energetic class for you for this, uh, but was not feeling up to it. So we get this today. Just change plans. Pull on your toes. Think about your lower back and draw your lower back forward a little. Oh, that'll make it feel more on your inner thighs, won't it? Yeah. Move the front of your ribs back a little, that'll help tone your belly, and then lift through your sides, lift up through your spine. And you may notice that that helps get a little bit more work happening in your lower body. You might feel a little more in your inner thighs, you might feel a little more on your butt, you might feel a little more even in your feet and your ankles when you find this extra bit of attention, this extra bit of optimal alignment just helps us tune in, helps us get everything to be working optimally, which sounds pretty good, right? Push your feet together. And now we can rely on the shape of Baddha Konasana, this pose, bound angle or cobbler's pose. We can rely on the shape to like hold us here and be like, oh yeah, it's great. It's complicated, it's hard, my knees are way off the ground, I'm working. But we can also put in a little bit more. Somebody's here. But we can also put in a little bit more work of our own and really take part in our Baddha Konasana. So to do that, do that with me. Push your feet together, like really actively push your feet together. It's gonna help engage your knee joint, which is nice, Protect, protects your knee joint. Stretch from the center of your pelvis out through your knees while pushing your feet together. 
And now, also tighten up your butt. Like you're trying to squeeze your outer butt in so that your outsides of your hips come in towards each other. Will they come in towards each other? I don't know, but squeeze them tight. Push your feet together. Stretch out from your inner pelvis through your inner thighs out to your inner knees. And guess what? Move the front of your ribs back. Move your lower back in and sit up tall so you feel more. All I really wanted to do today was feel less. And sometimes, often, I find that the right approach when that is my state of being is that I should probably step into that and try and feel what it is that is wanting me to like, not feel anything. So, this pose, these poses coming up, they ask us to take part, they ask us to feel. Take your hands onto your inner thighs, push down, and lift your knees up. Ooh, and then feel that. Give yourself a little hug, see how that feels. Wrap your arms around your legs. And then come up onto all fours again, please. Gomukhasana. Move your left knee over to the center of your mat. And then lift your right knee up and tuck your right knee in behind your left knee. Like wedge it right in there behind your left knee and bring your right foot down to the ground. And then, this is a little odd to say in words, but it's move your right foot over to the left and your left foot over to the right. Basically, move your feet away from each other so that your feet, your shins go at an angle and then walk your hands back and sit down between your heels. If it's impossible for you to sit on the ground here, what's probably happening is your left hip is way off the ground and you're rolling over onto your right hip and you're leaning off to the right. To fix that or to counter that, you can use um, a yoga blanket or a block. And you're actually gonna put the block under your right hip so that you can lift up and start to find balance in your hips. And you can see, maybe you can see, this block is quite thick, so I'm quite high up in the air once I use that block, but then I'm able to get my hips a little more balanced and find the even stretch of Gomukhasana. You can use a blanket, you can use a block, or you can sit both of your hips onto the ground. Your choice. Or maybe not your choice, but your body's choice. So tighten up your legs, squeeze your legs into each other, even though they're not gonna really go anywhere, and stretch your right arm up. Reach your right arm up, move your right thumb back, and then bend your right elbow. Place your hand on your back. Reach your left arm back, reach way, way back, bend your elbow, place your hand on your back. If you can clasp your hands here, clasp your hands. If that's not available, hold your shirt, just push your hands into your back. Or you can, if you've got a yoga strap around or a towel or anything like that, you can hold that between your hands if you can't quite reach your hands to each other. All the good options for Gomukhasana arms. This is cow face pose. Now, think about what's happening in your upper body. Can you hook your right elbow behind your right side of your head? See what happens. See if you can draw your right elbow back and hook it onto the back of your right head more. If you can, it's probably gonna push you forward a little, so instead, push your head back into your arm so you open your chest, open your right shoulder a little bit more. And if your um, arm's off to the side, it's all good. It just depends on the mobility of our shoulder, whether we can do that or not. And this pose, Gomukhasana, is a great hip stretch. And since that's where we're doing a lot of our focus today into our legs, that's why we're, we're doing it today. It's also a pose that takes a lot of time. <laughs> takes a lot of what? It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. 
I like to be in this pose for a few minutes each side. And that's on top of the instruction of how to get into it and how to get out of it. And so I often am skipping it when I'm teaching classes because are we going to spend five minutes on Gomukhasana or will we do three other, four other poses in that time? Today it's Gomukhasana. Squeeze your legs together. We're going to Gomukhasana this up a notch. What does that mean? I don't know. We're just going to make it a little bit more sensational. That sounds good, right? I like it. It's more sensational. Lift your chest, move your chest forward and start to fold forward. You can choose how far forward you fold. That's hard to say. How far forward you fold. Once you get into a bit of the forward fold, you're going to start rounding your back and that's fine. You can start to lean your weight down onto your legs and that's going to just help change things up a little. Get a little more pressure into your hips and maybe get a little more hip stretch, especially for your glute medius and your glute minimus and your outer hips here. Take a few more breaths here. If the forward fold is too intense, you can come right back up to seated. Not a problem. And come back up to seated if you're in the forward fold. Release your arms. Roll your shoulders a little to free them up. And walk your hands forward. Come up onto your knees and then uncross your knees. Same thing other side. Move your right knee over to the center of your mat. Take your left knee back behind your right and wedge it in. So get it really close, as close as you can, and then separate your feet. Left foot over to the right, right foot over to the left. Walk your hands back and sit down between your heels. Again, if you have your right hip way off the ground, no problem. Find something to place it under your left hip to sit on that to support you and help you find balanced hips here. Sit up tall and stretch your left arm up. Move the, your lower back forward, move the front of your ribs back, stretch up through your spine. Move your left thumb back, bend your elbow and place your hand on your back. Reach back with your right hand. Reach way, way, way back. Turn your palm towards the back and then bend your elbow and see if you can clasp your hands. Hold your hands or hold your shirt with your hands so you can pull on your shirt or you can hold a strap or a belt between your hands here. Go Mukasana, cow face pose. Push down through your feet, squeeze your legs in, stick your butt back, Move your lower back forward, move the front of your ribs back, and stretch up. I, I find that all of that helps me get more of the outer hip stretch here. So I'm hoping that that helps fire it up for you. And the other thing we can do to get more outer hip stretch is start to make it more sensational. Shift your chest forward and start to flex at your hip and fold over your legs. Take your time and pay attention to what's happening in your outer hips. Feel them stretch and find a spot where you're like, okay, this is where I want to stay. This is where I want to feel it. And then once you get to that spot, hold that and we'll stay there for a little bit. Push your feet down, squeeze your legs in, and sit up. Undo your hands. Walk your hands forward, lift your hips up, come onto your knees, and then uncross your knees. Take your left knee up from behind your right. And then come into all fours and give your hips a little shake from side to side. 
do little circles with them. Move your hips back and forward, side to side, aka make little circles with them. I think I said that part. <laughs> then come to all fours. Stretch your left arm forward, stretch your right leg back, Viagrasana. Have your right knee facing the ground, have your left thumb facing the ceiling. Push through your left hand, sorry, push through your right hand, <laughs> push through your left knee, lift your left thumb, lift your right heel, look forward. Bring your left knee and your right knee, <laughs> bring your left elbow and right knee to touch each other. <laughs> Round your back, stretch it out. Look up, draw it in, elbow to knee. Stretch it out, look up, lift your right heel, draw it in, elbow to knee. Once more, stretch it out, and then bring your hand and your knee down. Stretch your right hand out, stretch your left leg back. Have your left knee facing the ground, have your right thumb facing the ceiling. Lift your left heel a little higher. Lift your right hand a little higher. Look forward. Bring your elbow and knee to touch. Bring your left knee in, right elbow back, touch. And then stretch it out. Look forward, look up. Draw it in, elbow to knee. Stretch it out. Draw it in. Stretch it out, lift your left heel, lift your right hand, lift your chest, hand and knee down, all fours. Bring your knees together, bring your feet together, sit on your heels, Vajrasana, Thunderbolt pose. I guess your legs are supposed to make sort of the shape of a lightning bolt, your torso, look, that. look there, I'm kind of a lightning bolt. Thunderbolt pose. Sit up tall, spread your toes, and push your toes down. Behind your back, interlace your fingers. Pashima Bhattagulyasana. Then instead of your front of your arms moving forward, front of your shoulders moving forward, move your arms back, move your shoulders back. And then turn your arms out with your hands still together. Turn your upper arms out, lift your hands. We want that same attention to our lower back here as we've been working on. So move your lower back forward a little, but because you can move your pelvis quite a bit here, you may be able to overly arch your lower back. So I don't want that. Move the, your belly back at the same time. So also move your belly back and that's gonna help limit how much you can arch your back here. Move the front of your ribs back. Lift up through your sides of your ribs. Lift up through your torso. Lift your hands a little higher. Turn your upper arms out a little more. Squeeze your shoulder blades towards each other and stretch across the front of your chest. This is just our little break before the next hip pose because I want you to like me at the end of this too, not just be more familiar with your hips. All right, release your hands, lift your butt up. Speaking of hips, move them off to one side. Move your hips to one side, move your feet to one side, and swing your legs around. Okay, so that was a little forewarned, is there's more to come. Um, at the very beginning of class, I did mention that you might want a yoga blanket in class today. Just like I mentioned, you might want a block and a strap, right? But we haven't used a blanket yet. So now we're going to, I'm going to at least, if you think I've got tight hips, I recommend you sit on a cushion, folded up blanket for this next pose. Also, if you just want to, you can. So this next pose is called Agni Stambhasana in, in Sanskrit. I was gonna say in English, it's clearly not. It means like fire log pose. Agni is the fire. And stamba is a log or a piece of wood. So to do this, we stack our legs like you might stack the wood for a fire. You might not. Bring your, bring your left shin parallel to the long edge of your mat or the front edge of your mat. It doesn't matter, whichever way you're facing. Just have your left shin in front of you. It's a little like the setting up for pigeon. So have your left ankle engaged, dorsiflexed, so nice right angle in your 
left ankle. That's also hard to say. <laughs> and then lean over to the left so that your left knee comes down to or towards the ground. Cool? Cool. And then you can see what's going on with my right leg here. I got my right heel on the ground. Hold the front of your right shin and then pull your right foot back a little bit more. Take your left hand and reach for the outside of your right foot and then use your left hand and your right hand to pick your foot, pick your leg up. Move your right foot all the way over until you can place it above your left knee. Cool, got there? Then we're in something like this, right? Not exactly how we're gonna stack our logs for the fire, but it's a very good starting point. Take your hands onto the ground beside your hips and then just move your hips back a little. So wiggle them back a little, rock from side to side a little so you can get them back a little bit more. That just helps widen them up and it helps bring your right knee closer to the ground. To really get your right knee closer to the ground or to your left foot more specifically, you have to turn your right leg out in its hip. We do that by using our big butt muscle, our glute max. So touch your butt and then engage it to squeeze the muscle tight underneath you. And notice what happens. Your right knee is gonna get a little bit lower without trying, but by firing up that muscle. So then work to engage it even more and you might get your right knee to come down a little more. Cool, wherever it is, good. Now, you can let go of your butt, unless you wanna keep hanging onto your butt. Take your hands onto the ground on either side of your left, left foot, right knee, so this area, and then stretch your chest towards your right knee. So a little like we did in Gomukhasana, like you're gonna fold over that right leg, but don't come all the way down. Just stretch forward and lean forward some. Lean your weight over to the right now. So drop your right shoulder, lower your weight over to the right, and see if you can get your right knee down to your left foot. Doesn't matter if it gets there, get it as close as you can. And then keep it there as with your muscles. Don't hold it. With your muscles, hold it there, and sit up and see what happens. Your Agni Stambhasana might look like mine. More likely it's gonna look like yours, right? Whatever that is. Ideally, in the final form of the pose though, we're getting into a shape like this with your right shin stacked on top of your left shin and then sitting up out of your hips. And then our body is like the image of the fire, our lower body, our legs, our is, is like the fire logs all stacked up and we're rising up out of that. It's a pretty powerful image, right? And also, I really like the fiery feeling in my hips from this pose, fire log pose. I can feel the fire. It is burning, right? It is, it is eating away at these logs. But that's the thing about holding it is it really does eat away at these tight muscles that a lot of us have. Tight hips can be a product of all sorts of things that we do in our daily life, but sitting is a big one, right? And the way people walk, the way we turn our legs out, it's not, it tends to shorten these muscles. If you walk with your feet turned out a little, these muscles will be extra tight, and so many of us do that. We can also work to build our inner thighs, and you can check out the the hour long hips class I've got that is more about one leg standing poses and building the strength in your hips than, than opening them up. So it's a good counter for this class. I'll, at the very end of class, I'll link to that so you can add it to your watch later list. All right. And like Gomukhasana, this is another pose that takes a lot of time to, to get into, to be in it for a while. And so it doesn't really show up in class that often, at least not in Stephen Iwashki adventure yoga classes. It is this kind of pose that we need to get comfortable in, even though it's not a comfortable pose. We get to learn to become comfortable in that discomfort and understand that that's helping us open up. It's helping us stretch our outer hips, find a little bit more freedom of movement. To come out, instead of leaning to your right like we did to get into it, lean over to the left so your right knee comes up. And then, just like we did earlier, grab the front of your right shin, grab the outside of your right foot with your left hand, 
And now pick your right leg up and move it over to the right. And then lift your left knee up, separate your feet, bring the soles of your feet together, Take, have your feet wide away from your hips. So it's not a tight Baddha Konasana, but just to get our legs balanced here for a moment. You can even round in your back a little, just get your hips open a little bit here, and we'll go into the second side. And the two sides, right? That's why this can take some, so long. So second side, all like the first. Bring your right shin parallel to the front of your mat. Engage your right ankle, so it's a, a 90 degree angle. Your toes are pulling back to your right knee. And then lean over to your right so that you can work to get your right knee down to the ground. Now, I say that like it's just gonna happen. If it doesn't happen for you, if your right knee is off the ground, you can prop it up underneath your right thigh. So you can place another blanket underneath there so it's pushing down into something. You could also use a yoga block instead of a blanket or a book or something with a little bit of density to it. Like these yoga blankets are quite dense. It's not like a soft cushion. Something for your shin to be on. The lower the better for your right shin just because then we need to bring our left shin onto it. So, to bring our left shin onto it, pull your left foot in. Hold the front of your left shin with your left hand. Reach for the baby toe side of your left foot with your right hand. So reach over the top of your foot, grab the baby toe side. Pick your foot up, pick your leg up, and then move your foot over so you can place your left foot above your right knee. I'm gonna do this with just the prop under my right thigh here so you can see what that's like as we go through this side. So we're here, got our left knee somewhere near our right foot relative to say the sun, it's somewhere near our right foot. <laughs> and then we're gonna see what we can do. Take your fingertips to the ground and just wiggle your hips back a little bit. Just that action helps open up your hips and will help get your left knee a little bit closer to your right foot. Well, then we wanna really engage our left glute max. So take your left hand and touch your butt, touch your big butt muscle or the fleshy part of your butt. And then with that muscle, tighten it up, flex it. And oh, look at that, flexing, not flexing, flexing, not flexing. And that's because flexing your glute max turns your leg out. It does external rotation of your leg bone at your hip, which is what we need here for a fire log. So then you can get your left knee a little bit closer to your right foot, cool? Cool. Then you can let go of your left foot and take your hands, not your butt, it's your butt, not your foot. Let go of your left butt. Take your hands to the ground on either side of your right foot or your left knee. And then turn and face your left knee. Just like we did on the first side, you're gonna come forward part way. So pull your breastbone forward, flex at your hips a little, and lower your upper body some, and that's gonna help lower your left knee towards your right foot. And then lean in onto your left. So drop your left shoulder over to the left, lower your upper body over to the left, and see if you can get your left knee to come all the way down to your right foot. If you can, great. If you can't, great. We're all working with different things, especially when it comes to our hips. There are all sorts of variations here. So don't worry, you do what you can do. You do what's gonna help you today. We'll do it. It's gonna help you tomorrow, tomorrow. Keep your left knee as low as it is and lift your torso up. Bring your hands off the ground. Well, bring your hands off either side of your left knee and sit up. Just like I've got my right thigh propped here, if your left thigh is up in the air, you can prop it up too by placing a block underneath your thigh. So it's just so my thigh pushes down into it or a blanket or whatever works for you. And then with the props there, you're getting a lot of the resistance work that you would get if your legs are on the ground. And that's gonna help open up these muscles so that eventually you can do this with lower props or without any props. Find where you can go today go there and then we can adjust it a little bit. We adjust it a little bit to make it more intense. I know, sorry. 
Move the front of your hips forward, move your pubic bone forward and down a little. Guess what that is? Move your lower back in a little to find the natural curve of your lower back. Move the front of your ribs back and stretch up through your spine as you push down through your hips. Grow longer, grow taller. to close my eyes here. Helps me feel these feelings. Stretch your chest forward a little. Flex at your hip a little. See if you can intensify the sensation of the fire in your hips. Agni Stambhasana. Move your chest back, sit up. Lean over to the right so your left knee comes up. Hold your left leg and bring your left foot off, the, off your right knee. And then bring your right foot up. Place both feet on the ground and give yourself a hug. Wrap your arms around your legs. Draw everything tight. Draw it in. And then relax. Move your props out of the way and come into downward facing dog, please. Lift your left leg up. Lift your left heel up, up, up. Stretch your right heel back and down. Push through your hands. Lift your left heel up. Stretch your right heel down. Turn your left knee out and stack your left hip over your right. Bend your left knee. Lift your left knee up, up up and then look under your left arm smile stretch your left knee up and then step your left leg between your hands so shift it all step your left leg forward and bring your right knee down to the ground turn your left foot out a little bit Turn your right hand out a little bit. Push your right hand down into the ground. Bring your right knee, nope, bring your right foot off the ground. <laughs> push your right knee down into the ground and then stretch your left arm up. Turn to the left and look up over your left thumb. Roll your right shoulder back and lift up through your chest. And then take your left arm, reach way back, way back and reach for your right foot. Yeah, twisted monkey. Pull your right foot in towards your outer right hip and then push your hips down and forward and twist. Twist open to the left. Roll your right shoulder back so your right side of your chest is also opening and lift your chest up. For more thigh stretch, resist with your foot. Push it into your hand and breathe. Open up into the pose. Get low in your hips. Roll your shoulders back. Lift and turn your chest up. Take your head back. Untwist. Downward facing dog.
Same thing as the first side, lift your right leg up. Lift your right heel up and have your right knee facing the ground. So don't turn your right hip out to the right yet. Keep your hips square. Stretch your left heel back into thing. So you get more calf, more left knee stretch. And then lift your right heel higher. And now open your hip. Turn your right knee out to the right. Stack your right hip over or near your left hip. And bend your right knee. Point your toes. Pull your right heel towards your butt and lift your right knee up. Look under your right arm and smile. Lunge, shift it forward. Step your right leg forward. Bring your right foot to the ground between your hands and bring your left knee down to the ground. Just a little bit, turn your right foot out and turn your left hand out. Bend your left knee and bring your left foot off the ground. Stretch your right arm up and look to the right. Turn to the right. Roll your left shoulder back so that the left side of your chest opens and then lift your chest and turn it up. And with your right hand, reach way back, way back, way back. Reach for your left foot and pull your left foot towards your outer left hip. Push your hips down and forward. Roll your left shoulder back, turn your chest to the right and lift it up. Take your head back and look up. Twisted monkey. For more thigh stretch, lower your hips, push your foot into your hand, resist with your hand. Keep rolling your left shoulder back so the left side of your chest opens. It's easy to keep it, to close that up there. Lift up through your chest. Take your head back. Twisted monkey. Oh, this feels so good. Open it up. And then untwist it. <sighs> Downward facing dog. Lift your heels, come down to your knees. Swing your legs over to one side, and then sit down. Stretch your legs out in front of you. Separate your feet so that they're about as wide as your mat. Wiggle your butt back, place your hands beside your hips, and sit up with your feet as wide as your mat. Bend your right leg, turn your right leg out, and bring your right foot onto the inside of your left leg, setting up for Janu Shasana. Turn and face your left leg. Stretch your arms up. Move your lower back forward. Move the front of your ribs back. Stretch up, and that'll help you feel your leg more. Shift forward and fold over your left leg. Hold your left foot, if you can do that with your left leg straight. Or hold your left leg wherever you need to, to be able to keep your left leg straight. So key here is straighten your left leg. Hold it somewhere. And pull on your left leg as you push your left leg away from you and straighten it even more. Then stretch your head towards your left foot. John Ushershasana. They are able to do incredible things with science and studying of the human body these days. And they now say that we need 90 seconds in a particular muscle stretch to actually get the benefit of the stretch. 
It doesn't have to be 90 seconds at once. It can be 90 seconds broken up into a few exercises or a few repetitions. I'm not sure if there's an exact number on the maximum you could split it. But so you can do 30 second holds three times and still get the benefit. That's basically the long and the short of it. The long part though is 90 seconds. It's a long time. Push your foot away. Pull on your leg and stretch your head towards your foot. Because in that 90 seconds, you forget to keep engaging. And you gotta recommit. You gotta practice yoga. You gotta dedicate yourself again and again. Because it's not just 90 seconds of hanging out, it's 90 seconds of stretch. 90 seconds to longer hamstrings. <laughs> with your head and your chest. I wasn't timing that, but that's close. Stretch your right leg out, bend your left leg, turn your left leg out, and bring your left foot onto the inside of your right leg. Turn and face your right leg, and stretch your arms up. Move your lower back forward, move the front of your ribs back, and stretch up. Flex at your hip, fold forward, reach for your right foot, if you can keep your right leg straight and hold your foot, or hold your leg somewhere where you can keep it straight. Pull on your leg, push your foot away from you, stretch your head towards your foot. Amazingly, stretching your head towards your foot is going to stretch your calf muscles, the back of your right knee, it's gonna stretch your right hamstrings more, and that's because it's pulling your sit bone back as you stretch your chest forward. It's helping you flex at your hip more, which helps straighten your right leg more. Get more of that sensational hamstring stretch. And we can be grateful that science has shown us that it's 90 seconds that we need to hold rather than 290 seconds. <laughs> 90 seconds can seem like a really long time though. Pull on your leg, stretch your head towards your foot. 90 seconds is definitely long enough to get a little bit lazy. So re-engage here, straighten your right leg, push your right foot away, stretch your head towards your foot. Recommit. That is yoga. You gotta dedicate yourself to the adventure again and again and again, because it gets harder. We get lazy, we get distracted, recommit. Pull on your leg, lift your head and your chest. And sit up. Straighten your left leg out, heels as wide as your mat, wiggle your hips a little. And then come onto your back. Bend your knees, place your feet on the ground. Do another little bit of hip love here. Bring your right ankle onto your left knee. Lift your left knee up and hold your left leg, front of your shin or back of your left leg, whichever is more comfortable for you. And then pull your left knee towards your chest. Stretch your right knee out to the right. Push your shoulders down. Bring your left knee towards your chest more. Now, the more we get tight in this, by that I mean the more we get our shin towards our chest, our left knee towards our chest, the more we're also going to have our butt off the ground and our lower back off the ground, rounding and lifting up, which is what I've, I've got happening here. Work to keep your knee and your shin where they are, as close as they are to your body, and move your tailbone away from your face. So move the very bottom of your spine towards the very top edge of your mat so that your mid back, so that your lower back start to come down to your mat. Maybe you can even get your waistband down to the mat. If you've got high-waisted pants, then that's even easier. Bonus. <laughs> Keep going and see if you can get your ASIS. What are those? It's a little, the little 
indents on, on the back of your pelvis on either side of your spine. So you can get that down to the ground, your lower back, the top of your sacrum. Then you'll really be feeling more, more, more in your outer right hip. They're calling more, more, more. Sukhi Randrasana, is called, or Eye of the Needle Pose. Our hands are kind of reaching through what's supposed to be an image of the Eye of the Needle. All right, keep this shape with your right leg, keep your right ankle on your left knee, let go of your left leg and bring your left foot to the ground. Take your arms into cactus pose, elbows wide, palms facing up. Look over your right shoulder and roll over to the left with your left leg, right foot. Bring your right foot and left knee down to the ground. And then move your right knee towards the top of your mat instead of towards your left shoulder. Just a little, just to get a little more opening. And breathe into the twists in your upper body. Push your shoulders down to help expand your chest. Push through your left hand, push through your left foot. And bring your knee up. Bring your right leg up and bring your right foot down to the ground, other side. Bring your left foot up over your right knee, push your left knee away from you. And then pick your right knee up and hold the front of your right leg. So hold the front of your shin or hold your hamstrings. Pull your right knee towards your chest and stretch out through your left knee. And now maybe before you overly round your back on this side, you can start that work of straightening your spine. So move your tailbone towards the top of your mat. Even move the very bottom of your butt towards the top of your mat so that your waist starts to come down to the ground. So maybe you might even get so far that your lower back starts to arch off the ground. And you get your sacrum really pressing down into the mat. Keep your right knee drawing in towards your chest. Keep stretching out through your left knee. I probably don't need to tell you that because the shape is hard to, it's easy to relax here, but it's hard to lose the shape. Keep the work going. Keep dedicating yourself to this stretch. Keep your left foot engaged. Pull your right knee towards your chest. Stretch out through your left knee. And work to move your waistband or your sacrum to the ground. Sukhi Randrasana, eye of the needle pose. To come out, start to let go of your right leg with your hands and bring your right foot down to the ground. Bring your left foot down to the ground. Oh wait, no, don't bring your left foot down to the ground. It's just so, it's like getting all like relaxed. Bring your left foot back onto your right ankle. We gotta do the twist first. <laughs> bring your arms into cactus pose. Look over your left shoulder and roll over to the right so that your right knee comes down, left foot comes down, and look over your left shoulder. Push your shoulders down. Move your left knee away from your right shoulder a little, so towards the top of your mat, just to get a little more opening of your left hip. And breathe. This is a variation of Parivrita Supta Padagustasana. It's a variation of that. It's not really that, though. It's just a good chance to settle Get a little more hip opening without it being a super intense one. Slow your breath down here. I might have been a pose early, but I know where we're going. We're still, we're just getting into that quiet. 
second time. We call Shavasana. Push down through your right foot. Push down through your right shoulder. And lift your right knee up. Bring your left foot down to the ground. Stretch your leg that straight. Stretch your arms up and overhead. Hold your wrists or clasp your hands and stretch. Pull your hands away from you. Stretch your toes away from you. And then let that go. Separate your feet. Bring your arms down at your sides and turn your palms up. Shrug your shoulders underneath you a little bit so that you can rest on your shoulder blades. Close your eyes. Take a few breaths to release, release your breath. Refresh your brain. do start to release your breath. Just return to natural breathing. Relax in your face and across your shoulders. Relax your hips and your pelvis. Relax your feet and your ankles. Start to deepen your breath. Feel your chest expand, your shoulders move. Breathe all the way down into your pelvis so you can feel it expand and wake up. Move your hands and your feet. Move as you like here. And bend your knees, place your feet on the ground, and turn over onto one side. Close your eyes, and keep your eyes closed as you push up to seated. 
and then just come to a seated position. If you can keep your eyes closed as you come up to seated, please do. And bring your hands in front of your heart in the prayer position and sit up tall. Thanks for practicing with me today. Thanks for working on finding this ability to create more space in your hips and recognizing that it takes time. This isn't something that happens overnight, and, but it is the sort of thing that can happen in a focused practice like this, where we do take that, that idea of these longer holds and see what they can do to help us get beyond where we were an hour ago and be in this place where we can just be a little more comfortable, a little more confident, a little happier in our body. And that just helps feel a little more confident and happier in our mind and in our life. And that's really one of the great benefits of this practice. I know that I feel much different than I did an hour ago. And that's thanks to the work that we've done together. So thank you. Thanks for practicing today. Namaste. Thanks. Great work today. Thanks for practicing with me today. I hope that this has helped your mental state and your overall emotional state, as well as helping you open up your hips. I don't put a lot of time and effort into... Thanks for practicing today. I hope that not only has this helped open up your hips, but it's helped open up your mind and just open up the way you feel today so that you're feeling a little better, a little more open. I find that that does come about when I do this kind of work, which is why I wanted this to be our practice today. I had been planning something else, as I mentioned during class, but this is what I needed, and so I hope that it was what you needed today. Thanks for practicing. If you've got any questions about this, please put it in the comments below, and I'll get back to you. As I promised during class, this is a standing pose class is going to work on strengthening your hips in all sorts of ways. So if you want to do that another day, click there, add it to your watch later list. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please take a second, click my little picture over there, click the bell icon, you'll get notifications when I post new classes. Thanks homies. See you soon.